The PS Vita is a great console for visual novels. There's literally hundreds of them for the system, and most of them are untranslated. Some of them have been officially released in English. However, there are still a lot of visual novels that never got an official English release on the Vita. But, thanks to clever hackers, passionate fans, and fan translators, you can play some of them in English. I personally feel that fan patches are something really special, because it gives you an opportunity to experience something that you were kind of never meant to. And often, when the English patch creator really cares, it can be a better quality product than an official release. I won't mention every single English patched VN for the Vita here, so feel free to check VNDB for more info. And of course, you do need a hacked PS Vita to play them, and if you still haven't hacked your Vita, but want to, I leave a link in the description for you to follow. And now, let's get started with the video. The Grisaya series. Grisaya is a massive series of visual novels, the vast majority of which are available on the PS Vita. Of all those, four have been translated to English. The Fruit of Grisaya, The Labyrinth of Grisaya, The Eden of Grisaya, and Idol Magical Girl Chiru Chiru Michiru. Grisaya Side Story and Grisaya Phantom Trigger 1 and 2 and Phantom Trigger 3 and 4, however, remain untranslated. Grisaya is a huge series in Japan and it's about very many things, but I'd say it's first and foremost a character driven visual novel series with a huge emphasis on the main cast, the five different heroines, and of course the protagonist. Kazami Yuchi, who is a very unique protagonist. I've only read the first novel in the series, The Fruit of Grisaya. It's also by far the longest visual novel I've ever read, clocking in at 87 hours already. And I'm currently nearing the end of the fourth route only, out of the five total routes. It's in fact so huge that they had multiple writers for different heroines, and the total word count is close to 1 million. That's insanely lot. But don't let that uh, length deter you, because it is definitely worth playing. The localization slash translation job quality is very good, and it even accounts for different dialects. I should mention that while the uh, aforementioned uh, currently translated Grisaya games are mostly character driven, uh, the Grisaya Phantom Trigger games, which are untranslated, are more action-driven games. The Steinsgate series. Ah, Steinsgate, my favorite. There are a total of five different Steinsgate games on the Vita, and I've played through all of them. Out of all the visual novels I've mentioned so far, the original Steinsgate was actually officially released for the Vita, as well as Steinsgate Zero. However, there are three games left that weren't officially released on the Vita. Steinsgate Elite, Steinsgate My Darlings Embrace, and Steinsgate Linear Bounded Phenogram. So firstly, what's Steinsgate? Well, in short, it's an epic story of time travel, science, drama, and even romance. It's one of the best visual novels ever made, as evident by its ranking on VNDV. Steinsgate Zero is a sequel to Steinsgate, which actually has a translation improvement patch for the Vita as well. Steinsgate Elite is a remake of the original Steinsgate, but it uses its anime as the game's source material. In other words, all of the visuals of the original have been replaced with scenes from the anime, making it a very unique game. However, the anime did cut parts of the story, and so does Steinsgate Elite, so unless you really want to play with anime graphics, it's recommended to play the original Steinsgate first instead. But I personally think that having Steinsgate Elida on the Vita in English is still really cool. Steinsgate My Darling's Embrace Now this is a really cool one. It's a fun, light-hearted, romance-oriented Steinsgate spin-off game. It has six different routes for each of the six heroines. Despite it being a spin-off, I think it had surprisingly clever plots. It's a lot of fun and can be a great way to heal your heart after playing through the original Steinsgate. Also, fun fact, 
this patch was made by me. I really enjoyed playing the game on the PC and I think that it is even better on the Vita. Steinsgate Linear Bounded Phenogram This is also a spin-off game, but this one has 11 short stories in various different Steinsgate world lines. Each story takes place from a different Steinsgate character's perspective, and they're mostly non-canon. In my opinion, it's worth playing through, though some of the stories are a bit of a hit and miss and get boring. Also, another fun fact, Kotaro Uchikoshi wrote one of the short stories for this game, and Uchikoshi is known for being the creator of the Zero Escape series, who also worked on Ever 17 and even the Pepsi Man for the PS1. Next up is Wagamama High Spec. Now this is a game I played for a little while and honestly I didn't really like it because I got bored of it quite quickly. Nevertheless, I want to mention it. It's a slice of life visual novel about a high school student who also draws a manga serialized in a weekly magazine. Because the manga he draws is a risque romantic comedy, he keeps this fact a secret from everyone around him. He is then one day forced to join the student council so his secret isn't revealed. What happens next? I don't know. But looking at the game's art style, you can already kind of tell what type of game it's going to be. Zanki Zero is an interesting title. If you like Danganronpa, this should immediately grab your attention, as Zanki Zero was created by the Danganronpa team. It got an official release in English on the PS4, but never on the Vita, until a fan decided to make an asset swap and the English patch it. The game itself is a blend between a visual novel and a survival RPG. I did try it once, but the RPG mechanics turned me off. Maybe one day, I'll give it a try again. My friend Lagomorph really liked this game, and here's what he thinks. I quote, Zanki Zero is a hybrid of a visual novel and a dungeon crawler in a sunny, tropical setting. The battle parts and novel parts intertwine, revealing the mystery of the island as you progress. The most marketed point of this game is the rebirth mechanic. You and the rest of the characters age through a period of 13 days and can be resurrected after death. Being a dungeon crawler, Zanki Zero also has many other gameplay mechanics to make it more interesting. Crafting, skills, charging, aka rushing, gardening, to name a few. However, I found that the gameplay can be annoying if you set it at a level where it's too easy to be a challenge and just hard enough it feels like a chore. Remember to set it appropriately as it is adjustable. The developers could have balanced it better though. Coming back to the story part, I found the characters to be non-memorable, but I very much enjoyed their companion during my playthrough. You start off the game with discovering bits and pieces about the character's past, and I was curious enough to discover more. The plot of the game isn't a masterpiece, but I enjoyed it. Overall, it's a fun game to spend some time with, especially since you spend a lot of time on an idyllic tropical island, which is a feast for the eyes. 8 out of 10, Lagomofu. Nora Toto or Noraneko. It's a comedy moege, and the main gimmick of the story is that the protagonist transforms into a cat, which can lead to many hilarious moments. I'm not sure what's the best way to describe this game, because I did play it for a bit, but I dropped it because I didn't find it very interesting. It reminds me of Wagamama, but it has some more fantastical elements to it, i.e. the girl the protagonist meets in a park is a princess of the underworld, who was sent there by her mother to remind humans of death. It can be a good choice if you like Moeges and slice of life comedy VNs though. But uh, what makes this game kind of unique on the Vita, however, is the fact that it has H scenes included and translated in it. What's also cool is that the game got a sequel and it too is on the Vita, and it also got a fan patch but that one is only partial, because it doesn't translate the H scenes. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention you now. This game is the so-called grandfather of science-themed adventure games. It's one of my personal favorites. Yuna is an epic 90s adventure game slash point-and-click visual novel, ranging from a wide variety of genres, from mystery to real-life drama to exploring an ancient cave to corporate espionage and more. 
It's kind of a legendary game, which is known to have influenced many great visual novels that came after it, like Steins Gate and Fate's Day Night. There's two versions of this game on the Vita, the remake and the PC-98 version. And no, the PC-98 doesn't mean it's emulated or anything, it's the original game with the original graphics and soundtrack, ported over to the Vita on a different engine. Both of them have gotten English patches and are available to download. If you don't know which one to choose, here are some points to consider. The PC-98 version has retro pixel art graphics, an awesome FM synth soundtrack, a fantastic fan translation by Tia Wiki, but the gameplay can be frustrating if you're not using a guide, as it's easy to get stuck. It also lacks voice acting, but it does have H scenes. The remake has easier and more streamlined gameplay, modern sprites, modernized soundtrack, a new translation that is considered inferior to the fan translation, and voice acting, but no H scenes. By the way, the actual PC-98 version uh, has also got an English patch, so if for some reason you want to play the PC-98 version of you now on the PC-98, or a PC-98 emulator, you can. Robotics Notes Elite Robotics Notes Elite is the most recent game to get an English patch. It's the third entry in the Science Adventure series. The Elite in its name doesn't actually mean that the game uses only anime cutscenes, like Steins Gate Elite. But instead, it's more like the definitive version of Robotics Notes that originally came out on the PS3 and Xbox 360. The game has a huge story, and it's mainly focused on two different subplots. Building a giant robot with the Robotics Club, and uncovering a huge conspiracy involving the entire world. I did have some issues with the story and the spacing, and I didn't find the ending satisfying. But overall, the game's got a great soundtrack, beautiful looking 3D models and is an enjoyable and good experience, especially on the Vita. Now, one caveat with this game is that you should really play Steins Gate beforehand, as well as Chaos Head or Chaos Head Noah. Steins Gate, as mentioned before, is readily available on the PS Vita, but Chaos Head Noah will likely never get an English patch on the Vita because it runs on the RUGP engine, which is infamous for being very, very difficult to hack. Chaos Head Noah does, however, have a PSP port, which is more censored than the Vita release, but if there were any hopes of ever playing Chaos Head on Vita, it'd be best to hope that the PSP version gets English patched one day. Maybe by me. As a side note to English patched VNs on the Vita, I'll also mention VNDS. It's basically a simplistic visual novel engine ported to the Vita, and you can play many great visual novels on it, such as Igurashi, When They Cry, Fate's Day Night, and Tsukihime. Having VNDS on the Vita greatly increases the amount of VNs you can read on the Vita. And lastly, I thought I'd mention some English patches I'd love to see on the Vita. Well, firstly, the big ones, Ayoku no Eustia and White Album 2 would be great to have. I'd also love to see Chaos Head Love Choo Choo and Chaos Child Love Choo Choo translated. Chaos, Chaos Head Love Choo Choo doesn't actually run on RUGP, so it is English patchable. Planet, Rewrite, Air, The Key Trilogy, which all have Russian translations. But Planet is actually currently being worked on. I'd also love to see Amagami and Hatsumira. As I mentioned in the beginning, there are a lot more excellent visual novels on the Vita that didn't make it into this video, so don't take this video as a definitive list or anything like it. If you'd like to see a part 2 to this, let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video or found something useful, please like and subscribe. 
thanks for watching.